What's going on guys? Danny from Slow Restoration and we actually got some snow today. Which means it's cold out. It's we're in the, the heating season of the year and that brings us to today's video. Now why this isn't exactly car themed, uh, it helps, it can maybe help in your garage. So this is a patio heater and I do a lot of filming out here and I normally run the torpedo heater which is efficient as far as heating this space up. Um, it's a little expensive. It can, it can have a smell to it. Uh, so you, I try to run um, kerosene, which is a little more expensive than like diesel, but either way. So that's good at heating the garage fairly quickly and efficiently, but it's not good for filming. It's loud and um, it's it's loud so background noise is an issue so we're going to give this a shot uh, we picked it, this up obviously it's a patio heater now this isn't going to eat this whole garage up um, it's a big space tall ceilings it's not going to do it. it's only 48 48 000 btu as you can see there but i think i can get the shop somewhat heated up turn the torpedo heater off and then use this in the area I'm working in. So you might see this in the, in the background for the next couple months, I guess. And this should keep us warm while we're filming in that general area. So if we're working on something, we'll actually move this over to that spot. It projects out pretty good, um, and it's it does a pretty good job of heating a small space up. So um, anyway, we got this at uh, tractor supply and these were on sale. I don't know how long the sales on so when you see this the sale may be off But these were pretty cheap uh, $99 brand new in the seal box um, I've looked at the reviews. There is a door here. Sometimes they have issues with the hinge not being attached I don't really care about that. We can attach that we can drill some holes and put some screws or rivets uh, You know no big deal there to me and some of the other complaints were some of the uh, screw holes didn't line up, so they had to drill holes to make it work. Again, not at all concerned about that. Go ahead and open this up. And we have some paperwork. Set that to the side. And here's one piece here, so kind of grab that and fold it. There you go. Pop right off. By the way, the finish on this stuff is actually pretty nice. Uh, it looks like it's gonna hold, hold up. It's got a nice hammer tone finish. It's a really cool look. That would actually look really good on a, a frame, like a car frame, but. All right, we got most everything unpacked here. Um, the, the main kind of body of it, uh, the base, stuff in that box. There's kind of the tube. Here's the actual burner. This is kind of the whole working is how this thing actually heats. Other than that, it's just a hose and a uh, stand pretty much for it. Down here, they gave us the whole hardware kit in this little container. Here's the wheels for it, and here's a big plastic nut assembly that holds a bunch of stuff together. So, first things first. All right, so it looks like we're going to start from the bottom up pretty much. Here's the wheel assembly, like I was saying. That's going to go right here on this base where these two holes line up with those two holes. And they do give you these, uh, this hardware, one side was just laying loose in the box. The other side was actually fastened into this wheel assembly. But either way, this goes in through there and you tighten this up to it. Now this is the base, like I was just saying, and it also is a sand container. So there's a uh, plug here. You can pop this plug out and you can fill that whole base up with sand to give it more weight so it doesn't flop around. You see a lot of these online and, and just wherever uh, with the top of it dented and that's because it fell over or blew over with the wind. So if you fill up this up with the uh, base up with sand, it will make it harder to fall over. It will make it a little bit heavier to roll around, but it's probably a good trade off so you don't damage it. And moving right along, we're gonna take this whole cylinder here and drop it down on the base. It's got little tabs that line up 
I guess you can index this around wherever you want. I'm gonna choose to put the door in the front, opposite side of the wheels. I think that might be a little easier and possibly look better. They get attached by these five M8 or M5 by eight millimeter uh, screws and there are eight of them. So we have them out here and they just go, there's two per section and there's uh, four sections. So two at each spot, four spots. With that securely attached, we're gonna actually open it up here. We're gonna take the pole here and just fish it up through this hole here. And once that's through there, we're actually gonna take uh, these four, the double D, there's four bolts, flat washers, and then double P is the flange nuts and they're right here. And we're also gonna take this reinforcing ring and this trim plate and attach through the top, through these holes, through this hole, and through the flange there and um, secure all that together. And with that attached, and I opted for the nuts to be on the inside, probably doesn't matter, you can put the bolts up through too, it just was a little bit easier for me to do that way. This trim plate drops down and covers all that up. All right, so this next step's a little bit confusing in the directions, but pretty much this comes assembled. We're gonna unscrew it and lay it out kind of the way you took it apart. All right, so there's a bottom nut, it's rounded. That's actually gonna drop on first. We can drop that on just like that. The next is there's this spacer. Um, that actually goes, there's, once we disassemble this, the next thing is this, just a nut, and then there's two rubber washers. So this is going to go on next, the nut and the rubber washer will drop down over that also. We just let it all rest down there. And then we're going to actually take this. This is a tray, and you can adjust the height of this tray uh, with that assembly there. All right, again, so this is a little bit confusing. It says to put this on um, next with the metallic side facing up. Well, they're both sides look the same. I'm gonna, th I'm gonna say it goes on like that. You could technically put it on like that and have a ridge to hold whatever you put in there, but I think it looks better like that. So we're gonna drop this on next. So we have the rounded nut, the normal nut, the rubber washer, the table, and then this is gonna go with the threads pointing down. And then we can assemble all this by picking up this, letting that go in. We'll take that rubber washer, put on the threads there, and then this nut will tighten all that together. And the bottom nut will actually tighten, as you can see right here, there's a split in there. So when you tighten that bottom nut, it actually is a jam nut and you can adjust the position of this table accordingly. To adjust this, you just loosen this part up and then you can slide this up and down. And then where you ha when you have it where you want it, just tighten this up and it'll stay there by itself. Next step is to start building up the top before we put it on this assembly here. So we'll take these studs here, drop two of these washers on. Uh, let me see what their numbers are. So in this assembly here, bolt bin, it's FF and GG. So it's three and three. So spacer, washer, and this will go. Go right to the top of this assembly here. So we'll grab one here and there's threaded holes here. Just drop that down there, thread these in. We'll go ahead and snug them up. They should be a 10 millimeter. Uh, it does give you tools, but if you have your own tools, it's gonna be a little bit nicer than what they give you. So we'll snug them up and we'll do the rest of them. And then after that, we're gonna actually take on the, the base here, the stem where the hose comes out, there's four 10 millimeter bolts that go in and they were already assembled in there. They're not in that kit. So we'll take our wrench and back them out and just remove them. Once we have them out, we just threw them up here on our little table and we're going to actually take that hose and feed it down through the top of that. And once we feed this down through, 
just kind of push this right down in there. I know you can't see what I'm doing because I'm holding this with my other hand, but we're going to feed that right through and it'll come right out into this compartment here. And once that's fed down through, then we this will go right inside that and it'll pretty much sit there until we get our screws or our bolts started that we already took out. This, uh, they, they do recommend the igniter be right over top of this warning label on the stem. So it's warning and the directions on how to light it. So technically it can go, I think anyway, I don't think they have the pattern different here, but with all these bolts started, we'll go ahead and snug them up with a, a quick tip or trick is leave them all loose so you can move this around to get all of them lined up. If you tighten one up, it may be difficult to get the rest. But anyway, we'll go ahead and tighten them up. With this open, you can see our hose assembly is now sticking down through. Once that's all done, now the final step is to actually assemble this deflector. Here's the center piece. So those three bolts we put on the top will go right there. And then this stuff does have plastic all over it, which obviously you gotta re remove before you heat it up or it'll melt to it. And then you have three of these pieces that are gonna bolt to the outside. And that'll go underneath. And the bolts you use are, so it's gonna be double H for the washers, double I for the bolts, and JJ for the cap nuts. And all this, again, leave it loose until it all goes together and then snug everything up. And another little trick here is when we start bolting this together, uh, we're just going to use the center bolt on each piece because the next segment of this does overlap and sandwiches through the two pieces as they overlap. You'll see what I mean when you get started on it. And it does have bolts out at the edge where they overlap also. And there we have it kind of all assembled, each one of the three center bolts. Now we can go through and line up where these overlap here and get the bolts here. Once we get all the bolts in, then we'll go ahead and tighten it up. Once we have that together, it actually turns into a pretty big piece here. Um, but again, I think most of the issues that people are having and complaining about on the reviews about stuff not lining up is because they're not leaving stuff loose. I had no issues lining any of this up and it actually fit together really nice. Uh, the final step is up top here on those studs. Go ahead and put the flat washers that are left. Uh, three flat washers up there, we'll have three more, but then we're gonna take this piece, and again, those three holes right there, we'll line up with that, and then we'll put the remaining three washers on top of that, and then we do have some wing nuts, which are KK. Double K, we'll tighten everything up with. And again, once they're lined up, we'll drop these washers down on top. Three different spots. And the wing, wing nuts on here will finish this whole assembly off. After this, the only thing we'll have to do is put our um, 20 pound propane bottle inside, hook the hose up. And if you're wondering how I'm up here, this is pretty high. This is probably seven foot tall or so. Um, I'm actually standing on my 44 inch tire that's on the lifted Honda Civic we have in the shop. So if you like stuff like that, check out the rest of my stuff. One last thing to do, like I said, is fire it up. So we're going to undo our latch here, open the door up. Pull the hose to the side, tank goes in. No real way, I mean, once the door shut, tank's not gonna fall out, but there's no real way of securing that or they don't supply a way. But like I said, once you shut this door, it's not going anywhere. Go ahead and screw our hose on here. Turn our gas on. Make sure we don't have any leaks at this connection. Go ahead and shut our door. We'll go ahead and light this. Uh, you turn it on and you hold it in, hit the igniter, lights right up, you can hear it working, you can see it working, you can feel it working, and then you can control from low to high, 
and you can um, immediately see that starting to turn colors and you can definitely 100% feel the heat like instantly as soon as that ignites so so that's actually pretty impressive it's just been lit there for a minute maybe uh, the whole thing's glowing red and the heat is tremendous I, i'm very surprised at actually how much heat comes out and because of that deflector it deflects it in a pretty big area radius about where you're standing so so far i'm pretty happy now technically they do want you to use these outdoor only but my garage isn't really airtight at this point it's not all finished off and uh insulated so we have plenty of airflow and it's a pretty big shop at that so i think we'll be okay so there you go nice and easy to do it's a uh, if you're worried about things lining up again just leave everything loose until you actually get all the bolts started so you have adjustment um, but you can do it have fun and enjoy the heat thanks for stopping by have a good day